The Wood Whisperer is sponsored by Typebond. So I just got a call from the environmental testing guy and we're still waiting for the VOC canister test, uh, but we do have some results from the lead and the asbestos. Uh, thankfully, no lead. So they tested in, in this shop area as well as the living quarters back there. No lead in the paint layers that they could find, but they did find asbestos, which is not too surprising given the age of this building. So here's where they took one of their samples. They took like four or five and you could see two layers of tile and then that black material at the bottom. He said the black is where the asbestos is, that the two layers of tile are actually not asbestos. The point with this is it really doesn't matter because we're covering it up and we're not going to disturb that at all. But it is good to know just for disclosure purposes and just so we know for any future things that happen that that is a layer of asbestos. And this I would have never expected, but what the heck do I know? Under this sink, they found asbestos in this, I guess it's like an insulation layer that they put on the underside of the sink. And, uh, you know, I'm not really sure the purpose. Maybe it's like to dampen sound uh, when utensils hit that. Either way, whatever that schmutz is under there, that is also asbestos. So when we take this sucker out of here, we gotta be real careful not to disturb that, touch it, go near it, breathe it, eat it, lick it, all that good stuff. But hey, good to know. All right, so next up, we're gonna do a little bit of demolition. I just wanted to make sure, especially with lead and the various layers of paint on the walls, that we weren't getting into something nasty. So uh, I think we have the green light now to go ahead with some of that demo. You can see I got a couple of colors of paint that I'm experimenting with. Uh, I'm not sure what I wanna do yet with that. Uh, but we've got this paneling on the wall here and we have that vinyl baseboard material there and all of that is gonna go. Fortunately, after we put in the flooring and the baseboards, we should be able to cover up all this damage. And speaking of the flooring, The plan is to start with the office, so I'll let this stuff acclimate in the kitchen so that it's in the same environment but out of our way. Well, at least that's what I thought at the time. Okay. So what's in there? Uh, I stuffed it with paper? A newspaper from 1942. Fireman, volunteer fireman weekly. Oh my God, what the hell? That's where they kept all their pepper. It's the gift that keeps on a giving. Jason, what is that? It's pepper. He said it. Better yet, barbecue seasoning. <laughs> That's brisket rub? Yeah. Nice, Mark. What in the world? All right, so the work has come to a screeching halt. We saw this stuff, this black and gray powder pouring out of the walls and turns out it's all over the place. So we started to get a little bit nervous about what that might be because it kind of looks a little bit like termite poop to someone who doesn't know any better. The more we investigated, uh, we started to think it might be some sort of an insulation fill because it's kind of in this wall here, it's in any of the block walls, it's not anywhere else. And by the way, this is a cement and brick building. The only wood really in the structure is up in the attic. So it looks like it might be a vermiculite uh, which basically is just a uh, granule fill that they would put into things like the cavities and cinder blocks for extra insulation. Extra insulation is good, but I don't know how old this stuff is. I don't know the nature of it, and there is the possibility of asbestos contamination in vermiculite. I don't even know what the chances are of that, but if there's a chance, we have to get it tested. So we do have that test out, and we're going to find out what it is. I need to know what the nature of this stuff is before we proceed. So this part of the project now is on hold, and let me show you. You see that hole? Where is it? Right there. <laughs> Check this out. You can see inside there, it's all filled up with that stuff. So we need to make sure that is safe. And either way, we're gonna have to kind of consider anything inside the wall, something we don't mess with because this stuff is just gonna pour out. Certainly if it's hazardous, we don't want that to happen. Well, and in the meantime, we got the roll off dumpster, which is good because now we can start doing a little more gutting especially the kitchen. That's probably what we'll move to now because we're pausing on the office area. And then we got another uh, load of stuff and we find this little double ramp situation to be a lot easier on the back, safer for the tools. All right, let's get to it. No lightsaber fights. Now I know TV has taught us that demo has to involve sledgehammers and people not strong enough to wield them, but I assure you, there is a better way. Our goal is to make as little dust as possible, and I might just save these uppers for use in a shop. I know, 
We're so boring. Under the sink, there's a whole bunch of gross, but more importantly, you can see that there is one tile layer, so I'll have to figure out a way to fill that space so that the flooring doesn't dip too much. By the way, check out that copper line for the range. Nice. Uh, we're gonna have to do something about that. Oh my god, he sounds strong. Did that by himself. <laughs> I'm so glad they're cleaning this place. I'm gonna live forever! <laughs> And remember how I stacked the flooring in the kitchen? Well, now they need to be moved again because we changed plans. Some more vinyl peeling, and I decided to paint the ceiling. That should really help brighten up the space. Bright, now, I'm thinking about that flooring with the missing tiles. How to fill it? Come on, Spags, you've got a college degree and a silver YouTube play button. You could figure this out. I got it! Yeah, obviously, just drop a couple more tiles in there. So time to give the walls some love. Amazing what a fresh coat of paint can do for a space. Now the ceiling light was a giant pain in the butt. Have you guys ever installed one of these things? Getting that curve to look right and locating all the little studs, it just takes way more time than it should, but in the end it looks pretty decent. And the reason we went with this fixture is because the electrical connection is off-center, this allows us to distribute the light evenly in the space without doing additional electrical work. So now for the flooring. Let me stave off a few comments here regarding all the future renovation you're going to see in this space, because I think it's important to set the proper expectations. We're not professional installers of anything. Between the two of us, we have at least one normal working brain, and we can get things done. You may notice that we're not using the best tools, methods, or even materials, and that's okay. This isn't a house, it's a shop. And with all due respect to the people who owned this building in the past, we're currently in the thick of a process known as polishing a turd. The goal is not perfection, the goal is to make these spaces clean, safe, functional, and pleasant to be in. So if you see us doing something wrong, or using materials you wouldn't use, or doing something you think you can do better, you're probably right. Last one. Oops. Noise, noise. Now for the kitchen cabinets, Lowe's has a really nice selection of cabinets in their Means to an End series. And yes, I'm buying pre-made cabinets. I love watching you work. Holy Jesus. What is that? What the f is that? We'll install the uppers first, and everything was going pretty well until we noticed a crushed cabinet corner. Look, you reap what you sow, I guess. Jason headed out and picked up a replacement because he's awesome. Hmm? The current location of the microwave outlet would be too low, so we're moving it on up. Well, we're moving on up. We're moving on up. The microwave install was also a giant pain in the butt. I mean, if you do stuff like this all the time, I'm sure it's simple, but I've never installed one before. And time to test it out. Now for the lowers. The cool thing is we're able to simply copy the previous cabinet setup just using slightly wider cabinets to help fill out the space. And all these were in stock and available at our local store so there wasn't much decision making needed. I know I'm buying a lot of stuff pre-made and even though I have almost no tools right now I still managed to glue up this beautiful acacia countertop. Look at the end, it's all pith. Just in terms of like using branch wood. And I tried Mark. Man, okay. where'd you get this lumber? Now for the finishing touches, including adding the sink. Drop it, baby, drop it! Like it's hot. Oh, I like that. Okay. The backsplash was just a little bit too thick for my taste. I think it looks better a little bit thinner, so I planed it down. The underside of the top gets a few coats of oil finish. I'm trying bumble shoots because they sent me some. By the way, I've been pretty outspoken on my podcast Wood Talk about my thoughts on wood countertops and how I don't think that they're a great choice, functionally speaking, for the area around a sink. I still think that, but again, we need to keep this project moving, and a wood countertop is something that's easy to find and easy to manipulate, and it looks pretty good. For a light-use kitchen, it should be fine. Or not. Time will tell. 
So now I'll add some trim to the doors, some hardware to the cabinets. Some finish to the countertop. And some simple baseboards. Then, Nicole came in to stock us up with junk food. You got all your peanut stuff here. Your peanut butter, your payday, your peanuts, your nutter butters, your apples, your bread. Apples are not peanuts. Well, it's part of peanut butter. Mm -hmm. You make peanut butter yeah. sandwiches. Mm -hmm. Okay. Peanuts. Chips. 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 <laughs> Is there any healthy food here? Uh, the apples. Coffee. Plates. Yeah, baby. <laughs> and I think that's it uh, for now. Yeah. We got more room for chips. Yeah. Want some chips? Oh, plastic bags. <laughs> so we still need to paint the doors, replace the window, and eventually build a little table for the space, but ultimately, it's a place I don't mind making and enjoying a meal. And that was the primary goal. So, mission accomplished. What's up, dude? Oh! Oh! What's in here? It's like that fridge, um... It's empty now. It's like that fridge consumed the ah. mushroom from Mario. Bubble gum! The bathroom? Mmm. You're gonna like this one. <laughs> Alright, look up. What? <laughs> you didn't fall for it. Dude, that should not fly for this whole kitchen. <laughs>